Much love. Remain majestic. Welcome to Sir Majesty Easy World Science Channel, the easy world of science. Nice to see someone like you. Thanks for clicking the video. Today I'll be handling practical biology. I'll be treating some specimens, some groups of specimens that will help you in a, the exam that you might be facing. And this list of specimens, I will give you the, the, the list of the specimens and I will handle them individually and also collectively. Then remember to read questions in the question paper in any examination. Follow the instructions given to you. The Easy World of Science is here for you. Your academic success is my priority. And you, application of science and principles of science in terms of practical is my topmost priority. So learn science and try to apply science. Don't be an artistic scientist. So the list of the specimen that we're going to be handling today, we are going to see the, the uh, we're going to see viable bean seed. We're going to also see dried maize, dried maize grain soaked in water overnight. Then we are going to look at soldier termite, honeybee, uh, moody water. Then we are going to also see the lower jaw of a herbivore. Then the uh, uh, then we also need to we are going to also see the head of domestic fowl. The list is what I'm reading out here. Then we will also see quail feather. And then the leg of a domestic fowl also, so the head and the leg of domestic fowl will be included. Then the head of a dog and the leg of a dog. These are the list of specimens that I'll be handling in, uh, in this video. Remember, the rules in biological drawing has been treated on this channel. So search for it and watch the rules for you to end the highest mark because biological drawing is not like artistic drawing where people will look at your drawing and say this is a very nice drawing and they'll give you mark remember there is no shading in biology you must use your magnification i will also give you the cheats on how to draw some of these specimen here then i'll be handling the specimen that i listed individually and collectively i will look at them as one and also take one individually the viable bean seed we will notice that the viable bean seed is going to be a legume that should be the group and the micropyle will be intact so and it is it is viable which means when you place it in specimen d which is moody water which also have water it can germinate uh, although i wouldn't know they call it whatever specimen but i'm telling you with uh, moody water that bean seed can germinate and the other one says dried maize grain soaked in water these specimens should be handled as if they are one. You might be asked to relate any of these specimens I've listed. The relationship between them might come in form of similarities. You compare and contrast the differences and always remember to tablet any difference. If they tell you to differentiate between specimen G or H, you have to put it in a tabular form if it is differentiation. So you must put it in a tabular form or you might lose mark. Then rules for biological drawings. I've made it available here on this channel. So search for it and watch. Remember that there must be magnification and your drawing must have a title and your lines of label must be straight and you must draw with a pencil, not a pen. Not a shady lines, a light lines, but not invisible to be seen. So watch down my video on rules on biological drawings and end your highest mark because in biology, you are not just drawing people might fancy your drawing but you will lose the homework in the rule so the specimen the first specimen i'm looking at here is a, a weevil damaged by let's assume they provided a, a a bean seed that is damaged by weevil then the other one is a, a, a viable bean seed the one damaged by weevil is no longer viable i can no longer germinate it doesn't have all it takes for germination to occur remember you need the viability of the seed together with other factors for any seed to germinate therefore how do you know that is no more viable the micro pie must been affected the micro pie of the bean seed must have been affected and you can also say that it is due to poor storage that lead to the infestation of the bean by weevil. So the weevil has infested the bean and that made it not viable again. And how can you, they may ask you, how do you control the condition in specimen whatever, meaning referring to a weevil infected bean seed. How do you control such condition by storing it properly in an airtight container or using some uh, 
uh, some uh, chemicals like the gamalin 20 to stop the, the, the infestation by the bean uh, infestation by the weevil but the problem here is that you might equally poison humans that will consume this so proper storage will ensure that the condition in specimen whatever referring to a weevil infected bean seed proper storage will lead to that and is a is a loss to farmers then the viable bean seed is it has all the features it takes the micro pile is intact so everything the plumo the radical they are all there which means germination will probably take place so if you put specimen whatever let's assume it's specimen a and specimen b meaning the weevil affected bean and the viable seed if you put it in a water or in a soil that have water and in the presence of uh, oxygen or air it is only the viable seed that will germinate because the other one other conditions necessary for germination might be there but it will not germinate so then you have other specimen which is here talking about the, the, the dried maize grain soaked in water. Here, soaking dry maize grain in water, we have to think of something else here. We should think of osmosis and imbibition. Imbibition and osmosis are the two processes that control the absorption of water by seed from the soil. So if you put it, if you soak a dry seed in water, the process by which it absorbs water is osmosis and together with imbibition. So one should be able to define osmosis clearly. Osmosis is the movement of water molecule from the region of higher concentration of water molecule to the region of lower concentration of water molecule through a semi-permeable membrane. I know you want to correct me now by telling me that osmosis is from low to high and diffusion is from high to low. Don't be confused, that's a virus. You listen to my definition, I say that osmosis is the movement of water molecule. Water moves from where there is more water to where there is less water. For example, when you put this maize, a dry maize in water, but the water part has more water molecule than the seed itself, then water will move from the bat inside the seed. Another wrong definition, you say that osmosis is the movement of water molecule from region of lower concentration to region of higher concentration, my dear. That is a very wrong definition and you are just defining nothing but active transport. Be guided well. So you should learn osmosis here is the movement of water molecules from the region of higher concentration of water molecule. I said water molecule to the region of lower concentration of water molecule through a semi-permeable membrane. Or you can say it's the movement of water molecule from the region of lower osmotic pressure or low solute potential to the region of higher osmotic pressure or high solute potential. Maybe we're going to handle osmosis as a separate thing in another video. Then Soaking the dried bean, uh, dried maize grain in water might also make it permeable, like make it weak so that you can cut it with a razor or scraper in the exam hall. You might be asked to drop iodine on that maize grain. So if you are asked to drop iodine after cutting it either longitudinally or otherwise, you just report blue black because maize is a carbohydrate and specifically is a starch. And in the presence of uh, iodine, starch turns blue black because of formation of complexes. You can also watch some of my chemistry videos to understand the chemistry behind the blue black formation when iodine is in contact with starch. So I've told you the possible thing we are looking up when they say maize grain soaked in water, you are going to look at osmosis and imbibition and also you can also expect test food test because when they say dried bean seed you might not cut across it and bean seed doesn't have enough starch of course but maize grain when they say soak in water that is to make it very soft so that you can use your scraper or razor to cut and you might be told to add iodine on it then even any sheet of paper you might be told to drop iodine solution on the sheet of paper you are writing please the paper over here we are holding is made up of uh, starch also you also report blue black all the peppers if you drop iodine on it it will turn blue black because i think uh, you might be needing to you might be required to use iodine then another specimen is the specimen uh, soldier termite the marcotemis bellicosus yes the soldier termite and we have other insect, the honeybee here. So one should expect to compare and contrast between soldier termites and honeybee. And also remember the similarities between the two is that both are insects. You might be told to give two similarities between specimen soldier termite and specimen honeybee. Remember in your uh, uh, answer script, you, you, you refer to your answer as the question describes. If question says specimen B, you say specimen B. If you say specimen C, you also refer to it as specimen C. Then the differences and the similarity, we start with the similarity, both are insects, meaning honeybee and soldier termite. In the other way around, you can also, you say they, are, they have three body divisions, the head, the thorax and the abdomen then they all have three pairs of walking legs both the bees and the hot, uh, the soldier termite the bees is uh, the scientific name is the apis uh, uh, melitera yes i'm correct why that of the soldier termite
Okay, the, the, you said the soldier termite and also the the bee are all insects, and the scientific name of the other one should be the the Apis melitera, and the the soldier termite is the Microtemis bellicosus. They belong to the Isotera. Then the similarities I said earlier, both have three body divisions. Then both have three pairs of walking legs or six walking legs. You can also see that uh, both possess uh, antenna, presence of antenna. Then both possess exoskeleton. I'm talking about soldier termite and bee. Then what are the differences between them? Soldier termite lacks wing, whereas bee presence of wing. So if they tell you to differentiate between soldier termite and bee, you keep it in a tabular form. You write specimen B or C, depending on what they refer, the examiner tell you it is. So first, under B, wings present. Under soldier termite, wings absent. So you can now also see the uh, presence of large head in soldier termite, head not as large as that of uh, soldier termite in the bee. So these are the differences you will give between soldier termite and the bee. And remember, the similarity is that they all are insects. And hence, they are all insects. They have many features in common. They, have, they might tell you, identify the class of the bee, and the class of the soldier termite and give reason for your answer you just say answer the class is insecta reason because it has three body divisions it has it give those three through two reasons a head to be enough the three body divisions head thorax and abdomen it have exoskeleton then it also have a pair of antenna so both possess this pair of antenna so that's it then next specimen we might look at is uh, they say the the moody water moody water you might be told to just on the, uh, to study the, the the water there and what do you think is the ecological problem in the moody water hence is moody there might be low penetration of oxygen or low uh, yes low penetration of oxygen such that is moody it is likely going to be waterlogged such that there won't be enough oxygen in that soil then they might compare this moody water with any other specimen it can provide environment for the germination of the viable bean seed and equally the maize grain so it is a good environment though it's moody hence it's moody it is also showing that they should be rich in humus uh, if at all though we have when we say moody water it might be clay that makes it moody it might be humus that makes it uh, moody Okay, that one, we might not concentrate on that. Then lower jaw of a herbivore. The lower jaw of a herbivore, what are we looking at here? We are going to look at the feeding habit. Feeding habit. The specimen provided, the animal with such specimen have what feeding habit? You say herbivores. They are herbivores. The lower jaw shows that they are herbivores. Then give reason for your answer. You say presence of diastema. Diastema, D-I-A-S-T-E-M-A. -A. The diastema, some may call it gap teeth or some may call it open teeth. Oh. I don't have mine. Oh my God. Okay, don't worry. So the presence of diastema in biology is unique for animals that feed on herbs, and that is for the herbivorous animal. The lower jaw must have a diastema. Then biologically, what is a diastema? Is the gap or the space between the incisor and the premolar. So the place that's supposed to have been occupied by the canine is empty in herbivores. That's why herbivores don't bite because they lack this canine, which is opposed by the canacea teeth of the carnivores so but in herbivores the lower jaw we're going to take a look at how the lower jaw looks like in the lower jaw we must have the incisor pointing up then we have the space then the molars and the premolars at the back so the, you might be reminded to keep so this is now the jaw bone so here is our these are the incisor so over here is the incisor then here is the diastema. So we are treating biology practical class. Biology practical class. Okay. So you see this drawing. Where here the first set comes here are the premolars. That's before molar. Then finally we have the molars. So in case if you are told to draw it, then this is actually the body of the bone or the lower jaw. The lower jaw bone is what we have here for herbivores. What makes this a herbivore? They will ask you which animal have this specimen. You call any herbivore you know. You can call sheep. Sheep have this type. Why? Because of the presence of this diastema. This is the incisor. You don't call it incisor. Incisor. So after the incisor, you have the 
space. Normally, in the dentition of animals, in the arrangement, if you pass through incisor, you get the canine before the premolars, then the molars. But here we have, unfortunately, the incisor, then an empty flat surface, which is called diastema. It provides enough surface area for proper grinding by the herbivores. You got that? So this is it for the so-called uh, lower jaw. This is the only possible question that might come there. Which are, Can you mention one animal that have the type of specimen there? You say sheep or you call any other herbivorous animal. Then give reason for your answer because of the presence of diastema. That is the feature in this specimen that enables or that adapts this in feeding. So the, the adaptation of feeding found here is the presence of diastema and it is found for animals that feed on herbs as opposed by animals that feed on flesh. Lions own are not like this. And uh, can animal with this type bite well? No. Reason: absence of canine. They lack canine. Okay. Then the next question, uh, or the next species that we may be specimen, sorry, that we may be looking at is the. And remember, we are, you are required to have the teeth intact so that you can do well. That means the incisor, the premolars, and the molars. The first set after the diastema is the premolar. Then the last one is the molars. Then the one pointing sharp, like incisor, like chisel shaped. You can call this one now the incisor and is used for cutting. Then this one provides enough surface area for proper grinding of herbs. That's the diastema. Okay. Remember the Sir Majesty Easy World Science Channel is here and we need your support. I know if you're enjoying this class, what you're going to do for me is help me get to the higher level and uh, sponsor some of the videos here at Sir Majesty Easy World. We need your little support. There are many things we are lacking on this channel. Your thank you and well done work is okay, but it have not moved any house. There are gadgets we need to keep you here. If you watch my previous video, there is a gadget I used in the drawing of the spaceman like last year. I don't have that gadget again. So I'm pleading for your financial support. You can chat me on WhatsApp with the number you see there on the screen and do the little you can. And please don't forget to share and expand this science community. Much love from me to you. I'm happy I have someone great and lovable like you. Please spread the light. If you are not the candle producing the light, please be the mirror that reflects it. Reflect this channel. Reflect this channel. So we go to the next specimen, which says the head of a domestic fowl. The head of a domestic fowl, when they say the head of a domestic fowl, we will be considering here the feeding habit also, uh, the beak, the beak and also some of the features in the head like when they say local fowl there are two heads here heads of birds the other one is the head of a dog the other one is the head of a domestic fowl so one should get ready to compare and contrast between these two heads so first they might tell you the the head of the domestic fowl they will tell you to which what animal have such you can now say domestic fowl give reason you just state because there is presence of what short strong and strict beak short strong and straight beak that's the type of beak in the local fowl the fowl you enjoy especially on uh, ceremonial days and uh, uh, occasionals occasional days when you are celebrating those things you kill that's the local fowl we are talking about uh, so they they belong to the a group of birds called, called the gallinaceous birds the gallinaceous birds that's g-a-l-l I N E O U S. I guess I'm right. So they are the large birds and they are the ground feeding birds. So the beak is modified for picking seeds and exposing some insects from the soil. They are not adapted to feed on flesh. That's why it is short, strong, and also straight. It is not curved like the birds of prey. So it is just short, straight, but it's going to be strong enough so that it can expose and pick something. So that is it for that head of a local fowl. Then Compare it with the head of the so-called duck. I'm going to draw the two heads now so that we can do our comparison very well. So I'm going to focus my camera on the board fully. Okay. So we have, we are going to draw two heads here. Uh, if you are finding it difficult to draw the head of a fowl, you might write something like slanting U. Then, don't allow the. Uh, if you must complete the U, it's going to be also this way. Then you clean off here. See this? And this. You have a rough sketch of it. Then over here, you put your comb. It's necessary so that you can differentiate and label well. So then you have the eye here. Then when you have the eye, near the eye, you have the ear lobes. Then beneath the ear lobes, you have the wattle. Then you must show this to enable you 
in the labeling. I wouldn't know if it is this way, I guess, yeah, than up. So this one has shown us the head of the local file. Though they did not say the male or the female or the adult, but take a look at the basic local file. You must not go arguing so that you can label well. Then the head of a dog. You see how I drew this? I say if you are finding it difficult, do that something like a slanting you. The big goes there, you put this, then just try something like you because this will enable you in labeling. Then in drawing the head of a dog, you just need to write uh, a kind of something like you start with a rough figure like three and then this so over here this one is also curved then here this goes very far this one goes this way then there will also be these things here and over here we have and then okay if you are going to do biology you should also learn how to draw you should learn how to draw and watch some of my video here i gave some cheats and as i'm giving some here also the drawing okay then here you have the eye position your eye then you put the nostrils also so this is the head then for proper labeling should be curved the bit so the proper labeling is also important here for label sake we put the feathers you must not finish the whole head with this feather just put a man that will show so now we have this drawing this is the head of a local file and this represents the head of a dock I'm gonna label here is the comb Remember, your labeling will be one side, but I will not. Buy your biology laboratory equipment and the biology glasswares from Sir Majesty Easy World. You can place your order at easyworldscience.com. Here we have the potometer for measuring the rate of transpiration. It's available. They are affordable for you. Clinostats. Then here we have the clinostats for controlling or studying the effect of gravity and also the effect of uh, light on the go to a plant and here we have the plastic model of the adult skeleton very suitable for your biology laboratory so majesty easy one makes these things available here is your wind vane is the a very modified and astonishing wind vane i also have the one i construct by specialists we also help you mount it in your school so make your order today here we have the specimen the, the 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 skeletons for ma lower mammals the rabbit the organs even small specimen like lizard then we have the dry specimen the butterfly is there place your order today for we are available we are affordable and the prices are actually friendly for you and i'll help you and guide you in using anything you buy from me i am experienced in biology and chemistry equally i'll help you in mounting your physics laboratory even your hospital equipment anything science you consult some majesty's world for measuring the speed of the wind here is a model of how the the wind vane is supposed to look like if you buy from us these things are available at some majesty's world science channel and other equipment for analysis for weather analysis and biology practicals you get this one this is the wind vane this is the anemometer you see it's turning showing if the speed of the wind is faster it will be turning faster then you count by color like when i when this one rotates back again i'll count one two so the mechanism i have to use it to watch other of my videos but here they are showing you what are available for you at some agency world you place your order they are cheap and affordable we help you in the mountain in your whole school mount them for this particular wind vane, we mount it using this uh, pair of uh, compass needle. That's a compass needle for you to know your east and west, of course. 
So equip your laboratory with easyworldscience.com. God bless you and see you. The whispers in the morning. Hi, I'm Dr. Kinsley, and the product of Sama JC Easy World. Join Sama JC Easy World today and be proud of what your tomorrow will be. Much love and remain majestic. Thank you.